This fairly unusual radio here is the Brian Vega TS505, which was designed by Richard Sapper and uh, released in 1977. It's an AM FM long wave radio and it was built in Italy. The styling of this radio is very interesting. It's really asymmetrical. Even the speaker grill has no symmetry. There weren't too many uh, nice portable radio options by the 1970s, but uh, I'd say this is a very nice one. This is specifically a model uh, TS505A. And even more specifically, this is the uh, US version. You can see that sticker on the bottom there. It covers over the uh, printing on the case that says, you know, 220 volts. I've had this radio for a couple of years, but I uh, never did a video on it for some reason. I think I got it in 2012. Anyway, let's hear it play on uh, AM first. And Chapman deals to Pedroia. There's a strike. As long as he's throwing strikes, you know how good Chapman is. And he's throwing his slider for strikes. First appearance of the second Air Force decrease. He's got a nice signal meter there. And you can also switch it over to uh, measure the health of the batteries. It's so we can drive it the car. And here's something else you might not know about cars that's really helpful. That's a tone switch. And you won't get in trouble with the law. True car... Alright, let's hear FM now. This is the uh, FM antenna. Got a nice swivel joint there. Today's best country. The tuning meter is a little off for FM. Perfectly tuned in is supposed to be on that line right there, but it's really more uh, towards that left arrow. To my ears, at least, it sounds pretty much perfect when it's right there. Looking at me, and I saw him smile, and he said, Son, this world. I want to want to change if you want. Up a Duke certified pre owned vehicle. Off the like seat of a car. Running you. Some very practical application. Oh, there was no. Sure, that in, will enable us to. This thing's really a stellar performer on FM. It's sensitive, selective, and has great sound quality. I'd say they really made a winner with this radio. There's a magnet and a metal piece on the sides of the case that help hold it uh, open and there's this carrying handle here which 
feels kind of thin, but I don't know how strong this plastic is. Here's the battery and cord compartment. It takes uh, six C batteries in a fairly nicely designed battery compartment. It's got a little cutout for the cord so you can close the battery uh, door with it sticking out. Here's a little peek at the uh, inside of the radio. Looks like I did not recap it. but. Being as this radio is from the 1970s, it's just not as necessary. The caps obviously aren't as old as they uh, would be in a radio from the 1950s. See, the build quality is pretty nice on the inside. The other side of the case contains the amplifier and speaker. Fortunately, there is some uh, cracking there. I might glue that so it doesn't get worse. Here's the inside of the... Uh, other side of the radio. Looks like I did change a couple caps on this side. Not all of them though. That one there's an original. It looks like the power supply filter cap. I remember this thing having excess current draw issues when I first got it. And I think changing out that uh, audio coupling cap there was what resolved that. This business with the uh, paper towel there and the electrical tape isn't original. I did that because the case was rattling at high volume. It was kind of annoying, so that's just to dampen that. I'd say that worked pretty well. Thanks for watching.